Hi, cybersecurity professionals. It has been some time since I shared a new video for our channel. I'm sorry for the delay, and this delay is due to family commitment. I'll try my best to stay active with this channel and ensure everyone will be learning useful stuff along the way. And remember, our objective is to gear everyone up to be cybersecurity professionals. Or learn tricks and tips to keep ourselves safe from cyber attacks. I would like to take this opportunity to thank you for all the support and encouragement given to me throughout the time and your participation to stay active with this channel. To keep the support coming by subscribing to this channel, like, comment, and share around. Previously, we have shared and learned about cybersecurity awareness. And moving on next, I'll be sharing about ethical hacking. I'll be sharing the history and the phases of ethical hacking. And over time, I'll be showing and guiding the community on how to be a professional CEH, Certified Ethical Hacker. But before we start sharing about ethical hacking, I would like to take this opportunity to give a quick introduction about myself. This is for you to know me better. I am Dr. Tan Tian Hua, and I'm part of the American University Lakes University Lecturers Team, and serve as an adjunct professor of management, international business, and cybersecurity. I am the school lead lecturer for cybersecurity, design the cybersecurity course material and content for the school. I am also part of the mentoring team with Cybri. Being the assistant mentor with Cybri, I help to mentor IT, information technology, and cybersecurity professionals in their community. As the assistant mentor, I provide a career guide clearing those professionals' technical inquiries and helping them to review resumes and candidates for their potential hire. I'm not sure if you all have heard about Cybri. If you have not heard about them, just a quick background on who they are. Cybri builds its presence over the internet and they are an online committee that provides free and paid IT and cybersecurity courses for anyone keen to learn or upgrade their skills in their free time. They provide mentorship support with a virtual hacking laboratory for their paid members. As of today, they are having more than 2 million active members globally. As for my full-time job, I'm the principal consultant engaged by numerous companies to serve as their virtual Chief Information Security Officer, VCISO in short. My main duty will be to advise on their local and overseas office, operation across the Asia-Pacific region. During the pandemic last year, my company is also engaged by China, Hong Kong, and Korea companies as their cybersecurity and data privacy consultants. In terms of personal data protection, I am a seasoned data privacy advisor and serve as an advisor in data privacy for system integrators to fine tune their cybersecurity and data privacy framework and to enhance their internal policy. Some of the professional certification which I hold are CISM, Certified Information Security Manager. This is also another gold-plated certification that certified that the individual has obtained top-tier management and strategy level in the cybersecurity industry. This is one of the recognized professional certifications when it comes to cybersecurity. CISA, Certified Information System Auditor. By the name, 
you'll be able to tell that a professional holding on to these certifications can audit the information system. This is getting more popular as people are more concerned with personal and data protection and auditing is part of the scope. CDPSE Certified Data Privacy Solution Engineer A data privacy certification that defines the ability of the professional to design and protect personal data or company data. As I always like to say, you will be able to better protect yourself if you know the strategy of the attacker or hacker. Therefore, I've equipped myself with CEH, Certified Ethical Hacker. Not forgetting my ABDP, Advanced Big Data Professional Certifications. Understanding big data is a must in today's environment. Big data is everywhere. Even for ethical hacking, you will also require the knowledge of big data to ensure a smooth and successful processes. Let us have a quick review of the content for today's sharing. For today, we will be going through the history of hacking. Then we will move on to understand what is a cyber hacking. And finally, we will explore what is a hacker. The first step to understand something is to learn how does it come about. Let us find out more about the interesting facts on the history of hacking. Hacking has been part of the computing environment for more than 60 years. The origin of the term hackers began in the 1960s at MIT in their Tech Model Railroad Club, a classic hacker group. This is a place to consider the birthplace of hacking. Hacking was not known to the masses in the past. To be a hacker was to be part of a very exclusive group. They must be the elite among their peers and stand out to be the best to be in the club. Computing resources, or I would say computers in the 60s are expensive and bulky items. That require very careful handling and not many people know how to handle these machines. So the individual who is selected to handle this machine need to be trained. The hacker group consists of extremely skilled individuals who practice hard code programming and others older computer languages. Some of the languages we are no longer using them today. In the 60s, the term hackers was accepted as a positive label and people are looking to be a hacker. They are viewed as a computer guru by the industry and also be seen as someone sitting in the lock room carrying out programming all day. They will try their best to push computer systems beyond the defined limit for the better of mankind. When hacking first originated, the urge to hack into computer system was based purely on curiosity. The curiosity of what the system did, how the system could be used, how the system would react, and why it did what it did. It is all for a good cause. As time progressed, hackers changed their approach and they are finding ways to exploit holes into the operating system of local and remote machines. With more incentive looping around, it encourages hackers to start to exploit vulnerabilities. Changing from an ethical hacker to an unethical hacker, we'll be looking at some of the motivation which motivates and moves the mindset of these hackers from the good and ethical path 
the evil and unethical path. They are starting to develop to exploit security holes in various computer systems. Some of the common attacks hackers work in the current environment will be able to deface websites, steal credit card information and numbers, and or even money. And technically, what the hacker is trying to do will be to gain unauthorized access to computer's system. We will now take a look at the definition of hacking. According to Cambridge Business English Dictionary, hacking is defined as activities of using a computer to access information stored on another computer system without permission or to spread a computer virus. This is a doing of an unethical hacker. Some other parties define hacking more technically and professionally. Hacking is an attempt to exploit a computer system or a private network inside a computer. Simply put, it is the unauthorized access to or control over computer network security systems. They can destroy, steal, or even prevent authorized users from accessing to the systems. With a newer definition, the methods to gain access into a system in an unethical way is showing more and the roles hackers are playing are becoming more as well. From a simple actions like spreading computer viruses to destroying and stealing information from the systems. Even we know that hacking is referred to as compromising computer systems, personal accounts, computer networks, or digital devices. But hacking does not necessarily mean is a malicious activity or act. Another way to define hacking is simply the use of technology or related knowledge to successfully bypass a challenge. Now we'll explore the definition of a hacker. NIST, National Institution of Standards and Technology, defines a hacker as someone who is an unauthorized user who attempts to or gain access to information. In this simple and clear definition, we already know once someone is attempting to gain access to information without authorized permission, they can be classified as hacker. So anyone can be a hacker. Before we move on to the rest of the content, I would like to bring our attention to NIST. National Institution of Standards and Technology. If you are in the cybersecurity or IT information technology field, you'll be hearing a lot about the terms NIST, and therefore we need to be aware and have a basic understanding of NIST. So, what is NIST? NIST stands for the National Institutions of Standards and Technology. They are founded in 1901 and NIST is a federal agency within the US Department of Commerce. Its mission is to promote innovation by advancing measurements, standards and technology in ways that enhance economic security and improve the quality of life. NIST gives birth to a lot of cybersecurity baseline frameworks like NIST 834, which is a set of guidelines or deemed as best practices for creating disaster recovery. NIST defines cybersecurity as the ability to protect or defend the use of cyberspace from cyber attacks. NIST definition is more on a high level and general exposure, although there will be a more specific definition for each different user, but NIST will be the international general standards and definition. 
Another important factor you need to know and remember will be the framework of NIST. The five functions of the framework will be to identify, then you will protect, always listen and detect, respond when there's an issue, and recover from the issue. Having a framework is very important. And it set the objectives and direction for the company. It will provide the necessary guidance on how you will wish to implement your cybersecurity strategy. And it will also affect the overview and overall strategy of an ethical or unethical hacker. And in Cisco, she defined a hacker as a person who breaks into a computer system. The reason for hacking can be many. Installing malware, stealing or destroying data, disrupting services, and more. Hacking can also be done for ethical reasons, such as trying to find out software vulnerabilities so they can be fixed. So how we define the ethical hacker or unethical hacker will be by the objective of the exploit and the damage done to the system. So, what makes someone a hacker? In today's environment, computer hacking is becoming more automated. It's until the year 1980s, then hackers and hackings exploded. It's only then computers were available to the general public and much a more affordable pricing. With the development and growing of open source community, simple tools like Kali Linux, which will provide anyone with an easier and better interface into hacking environment. You no longer need to remember long lines of codes. Now you can sniff into a network in a shorter time and smarter way with the given tools. This is why hacking is processing a much more threats to the internet security nowadays. Some hackers are highly trained technical professionals around us. And at the same time, others are much less skilled. Now, they are also able to launch successful attacks simply by buying the available attack tools in the market. The concern of talents versus skill is no longer a concern in today's hacking environment. Now, let's take a break from our ethical hacking for today. Do remember to like, comment, and share. And I'll see you all for the next sharing.